Sunday morning to praise and worship your name. We thank you, Father God, for allowing us to receive, to receive your blessings. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for your anointing. Thank you, Father God, for your deliverance. Thank you, Father God, for coming through for us. And thank you, Father God, for your blessings. We thank you, Jesus, that we can be gathered corporately to praise and worship your name. Thank you, Father God, for opening up our hearts, for opening up our minds. We thank you, Father God, for instilling humility within us. We thank you, Jesus, for your love, for your love that knows no end, for your love that knows no bounds, for your pure and unadulterated, your true love. We thank you, God, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, from beginning and to the end. From Genesis to Revelation, you never change. The Old Testament predicted the, the New, and the New Testament confirms the Old. Thank you, Father God, that you knew you were going to send your Son from before we were formed. We thank you, Jesus, for humility. We thank you, Jesus, for blessing us with gifts, talents, and abilities. We thank you, Jesus, for providing opportunities for us to create wealth. We thank you, Jesus, that you have given us pure life. We thank you, Father, for your salvation. We thank you, Father, for sending the Holy Spirit to guide us, to give us peace and patience, peace that surpasses all human understanding. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us with the family, church family. We thank you, Father God, for everyone in our church. We pray that you would just cover everyone with your blood right now, cover everyone with your love. We thank you, Jesus, that for healing and providing healing for everyone that is not well. We thank you, Father God, for the joy that you have restored, for the joy that you have restored among us after everything we've been going through for the past almost two years now with this, with this virus. We thank you, Father God, that you have already provided the vaccine for this virus. Man may try and find a cure, but the cure is with you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing. Thank you, everyone, for gathering together corporately online this morning, and we thank you that we, 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 we hope that you would share our program, and we just like to welcome you this morning, and we hope that you will be blessed, and we hope that we hope that you would praise and worship together with us in Jesus'
Join us as we worship the Lord, hallelujah. God, we glorify your name, Jesus. We worship you, our Savior, Father. You are God, you are the risen King, Jesus. We bless your name, hallelujah. Oh, Lord.
My soul found a friend, so I'll run to the Father again. Come on, let's lift our hands and sing it out.
sung that song, church family. I felt it was really wonderful to hear that song again. We are all ch children of a mighty, great God. Well, good morning to all of you. I pray that you've had a great start to the morning and that you are well, well in body and in spirit. Um, I'm doing the time of giving this morning, and so I've decided to theme it. And my topic for this morning is who cares? So the first scripture that for this morning is taken from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, and I'm going to be reading from the message translation. Don't be obsessed with getting more material things. Be relaxed with what you have. Since God assured us, I'll never let you down, never walk off and leave you. So I want to tell you all about a story about Christmas. We all love Christmas, right? So Christmas in our home was absolutely great. We bought new clothes, we had lots of food, uh, the kids had toys, amongst other things that we, we chose to spend our income um, on. And over the many years, Nolan and I, we both always also um, used to get good bonuses and this helped us in being able to spend all that we wanted to over this Christmas season. And a significant amount of this money was actually spent on Christmas. I say was because, thank you, Jesus, it is no longer uh, anymore. Let me tell you how things began to shift for us. Exam uh, 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 what I remember is um, I was at a company one day and... Um, I was with a colleague and he, uh, she was actually chatting to me and we both were uh, talking about Christmas. And um, she began to share all about her shopping experience. And I also started talking about my shopping experience. And what I noticed that she actually was looking at me slightly weirdly. And um, I wondered why, but it was, it was, I was telling her all about the, the things that uh, I had done for shopping, I had actually spent time on buying new things for the kids. I had bought them new dresses and I had bought new PJs for them for um, the night before for Christmas Eve. I had done color coding and matched everything that needed to be matched and it was just unbelievable. In fact, I think cameraman, you've got some pictures up there. Can you see those pictures of my kids? Don't they look gorgeous? <laughs> so that's the extent that I actually went to um, when I was just shopping for Christmas. And uh, I noticed her looking at me weirdly and she was really a little baffled. And then she started sharing her Christmas experience with me. And I actually think I looked at her a little bit weirdly too. But obviously it wasn't known to both of us. We did not discuss um, our experience. We just shared um, what had happened during that time. And so I put this discussion aside for a long time and I, I left it. And then years later, we were planning a particular holiday. And, and for this trip, we actually needed more, more cash. We wanted to take more cash on this particular holiday. And so we decided to tone down Christmas so that we can have that cash and use it for that holiday. And can you believe it? We had an amazing Christmas and we only did a fraction what we normally did. And so the, it, was, it was quite unbelievable because we didn't even go to any shopping malls. We didn't go to many shop, uh, well, we actually didn't go to any shopping malls, I think. And we didn't do, go to many shops. We just actually did the, the minimal that we needed to do. And what we found, what, which was the greatest thing, was that the whole stress of that whole Christmas shopping experience was just not there. And we realized it a few, a few days after Christmas because we then realized what Christmas used to take out of us. And then slowly, as the years progressed, we slowly began to cut down more and more on Christmas. And we hadn't realized how much we had actually commercialized Christmas and from there on, our mindsets started to shift on spending, on clothing, on food, and just things just overall, not just only during the Christmas season. And so we are at a place right now where we don't really worry too much about what we wear. 
because we now understand that it really doesn't matter what you wear. And as long as we are looking neat and decent, we're good. Whether we wear the same clothes again, we're still good. And so in saying the above, I want to also say that it's not that we don't like quality, nice, good things. Yes, we do like these certain things as well, but we never go out to get it at the expense of not meeting all our priorities and also doing other more important tangible things first. We have sp learned that spending large amounts of money um, on clothing is not necessary and we have really helped ourselves as a family by coming to this point. I have literally come to the point where I actually just say, who cares? There's my theme, who cares? At the end of the day, our bills are being met, we are giving, we are saving, and more importantly, we are being obedient to God's word in giving back to him what he has asked from us. Life is too short to be worrying about what clothes we're wearing, what to wear, how we match, what brand we're wearing. Let us rather learn to be content with what we have and as it just doesn't count anymore. 1 Samuel verses 16, uh, chapter 16 verse 7 says in the New International Version, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things ma man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the he wants us to, he wants to see us rather growing beautiful on the inside, which lasts forever, rather than growing all our out, uh, outside adornments, as we'll also learn from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 to 4. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, stop shopping. And I know fashionistas and those working in retail may not like what I'm saying, but the emotional, mental, and financial well-being of the people of the family church are far too important for us, not to mention the spiritual well-being, as, as spending affects one's spiritual health as well. And so I appeal to you to go and have a look at your, uh, and multiply your retail installments by six or by 12, or even the cash that you spend monthly, and look at this total figure. Because we often go around and we say, we don't, ha we don't have money to save, we don't have money to invest in insurance. We don't have money to purchase our first house. We don't have money to send our kids and give them good education. We don't have money to study. We don't have money to buy a vehicle. We don't have money to tithe and give offerings. But when you have a look at this figure, you may actually rethink about what you have been saying. One of the preachers who I do follow is Christine Kane, and she said, we must stop asking God for more money. We must ask him to give us the wisdom to manage the money he has given us. Isn't this so true? Of course, there's a portion of you who are already doing all this, and that's incredibly wonderful. But for those who this applies to, I encourage you to relook how you are channeling your finances, to do the sums, to go back, to take the time to, do, to look at the facts and to study your bills and work out where are you spending your income and whether God is pleased with how you are managing your finances. Sometimes we don't look at the figures and the year goes by so quickly and before you know it, at the end of the year, you've spent a whole lot of money on clothing that's gone out of fashion and food which is just a short satisfaction and you still haven't met those priorities for the month or the year, and you're full of anxiety and worry and stress, which is not healthy for you and your relationships around you. Know, you. I know this exercise really helped us as a family. And if you need help, please seek help from those who you can see have got it right. Don't ever be shy or ashamed to seek help in this area. You will be taking the first step towards a better financial future. So I'm gonna leave you with Proverbs chapter 21, verse 20, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version. There is precious treasure and oil in the house of the wise, in brackets who prepare for the future, but a short-sighted and foolish man swallows it up and wastes it. I hope that you've been able to pick up something of value in this message. Let us just pray. 
Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for being such a good God that we can come to you and ask you on a daily basis for your wisdom, for your guidance, and for your learning in the area of financial spending. Father, continue to work on us in this area so that we can come to a place where we know that we are pleasing to you, Lord, and that you are happy with all that we are doing in the area of our finances. Father, thank you for the jobs that you give to each and every one of us who are employed. We are truly grateful for just being here today, no matter what our financial circumstances are. And even for those who are seeking jobs at this time, Father, we pray that a new door and a fresh start will fall upon them and they will follow your way in how they manage their finances away as well. Father, bless the service as we further continue in Jesus' name. Amen.
use this for but God is saying wait on the Lord
God, let's give God some worship. Give God some praise. And say, worthy is the Lord, God Almighty. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, right now we come before you in the mighty and powerful, precious and holy name of Jesus. And Lord, we say today, lead us and guide us as we come to honor you. In all that we do, in all that we say, we come to honor you as our God. We come to glorify the Lord our God. We come to lift you up higher and higher. We come to lift you up, Lord, higher for you. You are Lord, you are Lord. Now, Father, we ask you to speak into our lives. Change our hearts and change our thinking. Change our mindsets, oh Lord. Break all the old way of thinking. Break all the old way of worshipping. Break all the old way of praying, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Oh, like David cried out, cast me not away, cast me not away. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us. And now as we will listen to your word and just sit and digest this word, we ask you, God, to change us from the inside out. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody this morning said, Amen. Amen, amen. You can take your seats at home, wherever you're watching from. I want to just place on record an apology for the break in transmission. That's one of the things that just irks me and gets to me. I don't know why that happens, but we need to investigate that and see how we can solve that. I don't know if other churches experience this. Maybe you might know. If they do, then I'm okay. But if they don't, then we're doing something wrong here at the family church or our service provider. Whoever we deal with on the internet is not as efficient as they profess to be. So maybe some of you technical whiz kids out there, check it out. Let us know. 
so we can make a decision. Now, I'm seeing noise there. I don't know what it is. And all those little things just distract me. So let's just focus now so that we can be on board with what's happening. Now, I want to know this morning, every one of you that's online, how many of you are ready to get in to a stronger place with God? Every one of you. If you are ready, I want you to hashtag, I'm ready. Every one of you who are ready to get into a stronger relationship with God. I want you to hashtag that this morning. I am ready. That's right, every one of you. And for those of you that have just come online, a very warm welcome to all of you. Please share the program. Many people have already come off because of the break in transmission. Share the program. We'll never know who God wants to bless through this transmission and through the service today. That's right. Thank you, everyone that's online. I'm ready. I can see that you're all coming on and you're all ready and you're getting ready for what God is about to do. Now, before I get into the Word, I want to say something about uh, the, uh, p- the pandemic we are in. Many people have been asking me as a pastor and saying, the Pastor, have you taken the vaccine? Have you taken your jab? And Pastor, what is everyone saying? The jab and everything they're talking about, is it demonic? Is it evil? And so many people have asked me, Noel, have you taken the jab? What is the way forward regarding the jab? In other words, the vaccine. Well, I want to announce to you today, both Portia and I, this past Friday, have taken our second jab. We are both vaccinated, and if that may answer your question and allay all doubts and fear, let it be. And so that's it with our first announcement today. Secondly, this past week, we were so excited to have what we call the pre-marriage class. We had five couples that are being married, and we had met with them, and it was the first uh, pre-marriage class that we had held here at the church, and we were really blessed to have all five of those couples, and as a church, we want to wish them and pray the blessing of God upon their future as couples as they will take their vows in a couple of weeks' time. Then I want to just give you three um, courses that are coming up in the next couple of weeks. You've got to stay close to the uh, church announcements on social media. You've got to stay connected to the services to listen to what's happening. And if you are not on our WhatsApp communication list, please message us. Our number is on the screen. You can see that coming up. Message us and say, please, can I be added to the WhatsApp communication group so that you can be aware of what the church is offering. So firstly, we are going to be having what we call Grief Share. Grief Share is a a course that's going to take place for people who are struggling with grief. Grief is something real. Grief is something we cannot run away from. And it is something that we all need to go through because God is with us. But we understand that many of us need a time of counsel. And this is going to be a group session. And you can find out more about that as you contact the church. And that's going to start in a couple of weeks time. Secondly, we are having what we call, and that's under the ministry of the family man, and we are going to be talking about my marriage and me. That's the subject, and so that is aimed at all the guys. So men, you need to register for that. That's going to be in October, and watch out for the dates. You have to be here for that session. It's called My Marriage and Me. If you want to be a better husband, if you want to be a better father, if you want to be a better, uh, have a better marriage, a godly marriage, then this class is for you. Every one of us, including me, is going to be here because all of us have to learn what God is saying to us. And then last but not least, in the month of October, we are starting the third course called Groomed for Life. And that is aimed at all the 18 to 35 year olds. We want to get them into this category. And there were two words that we spoke of. And it was called entitlement. And it was called, help me. No, that's okay. Entitlement and second. 
competence, incompetence. Those are two words that is worrying us as a, not only a church, but in our circle when we talk. And we want to get the young people groomed for life. So 18 to 35 year olds, this is for you. If you want to get groomed for life, get groomed for the workplace. Know what to expect when you get into the workplace. Know how to perform, how to behave, what attitude to have. This class is for you. It's going to be a whole well-rounded course that's going to enable you to get groomed for life so that you can fulfill all that God has for you. And then last but not least, before we get into today's teaching, we are open on Tuesday nights. So the past Tuesday, we were all here. It was so great to have the people that had gathered here to pray. And so we are only taking certain number. The president hasn't spoken yet. I asked somebody earlier on and they said, well, we'll never know. He may just speak today or whenever. But he's the president. He can decide and he'll let us know. But for now, Tuesday nights we are open, we are only taking a select number of people, and so if you want to be here in the church, register now so that you can have an opportunity to be in the building. Amen. So many of you have said that you are ready, and so am I, and we want to get now straight into this morning's teaching and see what the Lord is saying regarding this very important subject of the excellence of God. Now, I must uh, commend Portia. I don't know how many of you have heard the whole teaching. Maybe some of you have. For those of you that haven't, you can go back and replay that. But Portia had given you a very real example of something that we've been through as a family regarding spending, regarding uh, Christmas, regarding priorities, regarding finances, regarding all those things that go in line with where we want to please people and worry more about how we look on the outside than what we look on the inside. So that was a very well-balanced teaching. And so you must go back and listen. You want to come and say it again, love? I can see you. You re you're ready to say it again? Okay, she's nodding her head this way. So that means she means go back and look at the program and you will learn. But she set a very good example. And I think that is in line with what I'm going to be speaking on today regarding the excellence of God. Now, if I may say from the start today, this word excellence for me, for a while, and Portia and I had discussed this, this, I, maybe I must get a, a, a Hayden, uh, get me one of those stools, please. Maybe I'm going to sit and I'm going to talk a little and we're going to change gears. But this subject had got me to a place where it had put me off. Now, I want to be real with you and I want to be upfront and I want to be straightforward because I minister according to how the Holy Spirit comes and brings conviction and revelation as my relationship is growing with God. And I know that there was a season in my life when the word excellence was something that whenever it was mentioned, it did not appeal to me. As much as I knew the importance of excellence, but what did not appeal to me was the way and manner in which I saw the world advertising excellence. And sometimes, if we are not careful, the world way of doing things creeps into the church, and then we find that we are no longer following the pattern of God, but we are following the pattern of the world. Thank you, Hayden. So, we are talking today about a very important subject. You can see I'm now relaxed and I'm switching off my preaching and so we are going to teach. So get ready, get your pens and papers ready and we are going to talk today about the subject of excellence. Now, if I may say, as I unpack this as we go along, we as children of God, in other words, we as Christians, we have to set the standard and we must not learn the standard. Now there's a difference between setting the standard and learning the standard. We have to set the standard. Why? Because we are children of God and we are worshipping a God 
who is excellent. We are worshipping a God who is perfect. And so what better example to follow than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And so if I may ask you this today, how many of you out there watching with your families would rather be popular with the world than be popular in heaven? Now that's a question that you need to answer and you need to ask yourself. Do I want to be popular on earth or do I want to be popular in heaven? Because that will give you the answer of what and how you look at the word excellence and how you manage your personal life in accordance with where you want to go as an individual. Now, if I, and let me also throw this in, an excellent person, an ex, a person with an excellent spirit always goes the extra mile. I'm talking to people today that are working in companies. I'm talking to people today that are staff. I'm addressing people today that are on junior level management, senior level management, executive ships, directorship of companies. I'm talking to people today that own their own companies. I'm talking to husbands and wives. I'm talking to children. I'm talking to students. I'm talking to scholars. I'm talking to the whole family unit. And so I'm talking to you about excellence and an excellent person always goes the extra mile. The person doesn't count the cost. The person doesn't look at the clock. The person doesn't make excuses. Excellence requires you as an individual, firstly, to care. Because if you don't care, then you have nothing to focus on and benchmark against because if you are a caring person means you care about what you do how you do it why you do it then my dear friend you are on track for where God wants to take you now excellence requires you also to have what we call the fear or the reverence of God if you do not have the fear or the reverence of God the perspective of who God is and have that fear Excellence is not going to be a word that is going to mean much to you. What's going to mean much is the way the world explains excellence to you. And lastly, before I get into this, don't make excuses for your disobedience. Don't make excuses for your disobedience. Now, you can see that I'm getting into this from a different angle. And as much as I'm going to be talking and give you uh, much spiritual truth, I'm going to also give you some practical tips on how to work on yourself as an individual and become excellent so that we can bring glory to God and we can be pleasing as children of the Lord. Now, the book of Daniel teaches us about excellence and it is a very interesting book when you look at the life of Daniel. And for those of you that have read this, and I'm sure most of you have, but for those of you that have not yet read the book of Daniel, when you have a chance, you must go through the book of Daniel, start from chapter 1 and continue, and you will learn how this young man who was called by the kings to come and work with all the other young men, and the king put out a very precise, a very accurate, and a very detailed list of the type of people he is looking for to serve in the king's palace. And this is what the Bible says in Daniel chapter 1, verse number 4. He is looking for youth without blemish, of good appearance and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, endowed with understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace and to teach them the literature and the language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate and the wine that he drank. And they were to be educated for three years. And at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. 
Now Daniel went along with his friends, and you all know the names of his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and all four of them together with others, also was with Daniel in the king's palace. And Daniel stood out from the whole group because he had the fear of God. Now you can be a young boy, a young girl, a young man, or a young woman, or wherever you are in life. And you can be in wherever, whatever journey you are, and you can be amongst a group of people. And you will find that there will be criteria that will be put forward in order to ascertain where to bring and how to bring you as a group up onto level or onto par with where the company wants you or whatever organization you are with. But let me say this, unless you understand where, who God is, understand the nature of God, you are not going to be able to fulfill excellence in its totality because you will find yourself wanting when you do it the world way and not God's way. Daniel chapter 2 goes on to speak about how Daniel, because of the way he was, and when he defiled or he did not want to eat the king's food because he knew that the importance of not eating it and he wanted to do, do otherwise, he did not break his personal beliefs and his personal way of thinking and his relationship with the Lord. And so we find that he was eventually promotion and advancement came to Daniel and he became bigger and bigger and they put him in charge of much because of the way Daniel excelled in things of his life. Now many people may stop there and say, I want to get so excellent because I want to grow and I want to do this. I want to be the CEO. I want to be the big shot. I want to be the owner. And if you are focused on that, let me say this. As much as there's nothing wrong in having goals and personal uh, goals set, your, unless your goals are biblically based, Unless your relationship with God is at the level where He wants it to be, you're going to find that your journey in the world, in the secular world, on the job, is going to be that much more unfulfilling, frustrating, because you're going to go about doing it the absolute wrong way. I remember I said this to some people a while back. I said, you rather give me a plate of food and I'm talking about excellence today. Give me a plate of food from an excellent spirit than giving me a plate of food on a gold plate with a bad heart, with a heart of um, anger and jealousy and whatever other uh, uh, contrary spirits there are. I'd rather have a plate of food for you on a broken plate but from an excellent spirit, then on a gold plate from a poor spirit. Does that make sense? So we are talking to you today about excellence and why we as children of God need to be excellent according to how God wants us. Now Daniel 5.12 says, For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretations. Daniel, because of the way he was, his fear of God and his priorities in life, Excellence was second nature to him because everything he did was to please God and not man. And when he did things to please God, he knew that invariably it, what he is doing is he is pleasing man because pleasing God will definitely please man because it will be result driven and people who you are employed for, people who you are working under do want results at the end of the day. Daniel 6.3 says, Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave him thought to settle him over the whole realm. Now before I get any further, 
2 Peter, verse number, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3 says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and to His own excellence, by which He has granted to us His precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world of sinful desires. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith and, sorry, supplement your faith with virtue. That's a very important word. And you can write that down somewhere because that word is going to come up in your life sooner or later. And every one of us have to go according to the godly virtues in life in order to excel in whatever God has placed us. And virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed with uh, former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent. I see the video has been interrupted on my side. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and your election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. And then verse number 12 says, Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I think it, is, I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to stir you up by, as a reminder. And verse number 15, And I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able to at any time recall these things. There is a pattern that we need to understand and we need to imitate. It's very easy to imitate the pattern of the world. It's very easy to imitate the successful men and women of the world. People that have made it in life. People that are making it in life. People that have made it in life and have passed on. It's very easy to use them as role models and look at them and say, I want to mirror myself against them. But this is um, a pattern from the book of 1 Corinthians 11 1 and John 5 19. The pattern is that we need to be imitators of God to Christ to mentor, and then to mentee. And for excellence to be a way of life means we must be strong in our godly virtues. Now, I don't know, and maybe you must tell me, but I just went off on my thing. If you all are still on, please send a message. I don't know. I've seen an interruption. Everyone here is saying we are fine. But if you're on, then I don't know why this went off. But let's get into it. Excellence, number one, you must understand, is not a gift. Many people think that to be excellent as an individual is a gift from God. Excellence is not a gift. Neither are you born with excellence. Excellence has to be pursued. As a person, if you want to make it in life with God on your side, then God says you have to pursue excellence in order to achieve and to get to where you want. You see, there was a song that my father, we were talking to my parents the other day, and they were having a chat with the children, and we were asking my father a whole lot of things regarding where and how did he grow up and all the things that he did as a young man. And he said he was talking about many things, but one of the songs he said that they sung when they were a young group is, You can't get to heaven on a rocking chair. 
And that means, and I laughed at that when I heard it because Portia asked him to repeat that for the sake of the kid's benefit. You cannot get to heaven on a rocking chair means you cannot be lazy if you want to make it as a child of God. Because God wants us to have diligence. God wants us to work hard in order for Him to do His bit. But He wants us to do our bit so that the supernatural can touch the natural and we can move on with what God wants for us. Many people are stuck thinking that they can just be lazy. They can just take the easy way out and expect everything to be excellent. And so that the world may clap and applaud. But God is not clapping and applauding Simply because we are doing it the wrong way. God will give you the desires, but we as His children have to cultivate what God has put within us. It's an attitude that is generated by a spirit, and that spirit is linked, of course, to the Holy Spirit. Don't expect excellence to be a gift of the Spirit. If you are given to slothfulness and an attitude of uh, covering up your lack of, of the pursuit of excellence of this phrase where we talk about the gift of the spirit of the sorry the excellence of spirit you have to know that slothfulness and laziness has to be out of your dictionary out of your vocabulary out of your thinking and out of your circles if god wants it done you ever heard people saying this if god wants it done he'll get it done God wants to get it done through you. And if you have that attitude where because of laziness and slothfulness, you are making those statements, then you are positioning yourself for a great lack of excellence and thereby you are restricting yourselves from growing as an individual. To excel means to go beyond. Now the world uses this word to be superior. The Bible also talks about being superior. But let me say this. Don't ever regard yourself higher than anybody else in life. If you want to look at excellence and you're regarding yourself as a person who is superior to other people, then my dear friend, you do not understand the true meaning of excellence. Because excellence does not separate us from people who are Christians, who are children of God, where we make them feel small, where we make them feel as though they are inadequate, etc., etc. Excellence is an excellent spirit because God wants to work more in our hearts than He wants to see what happens on the outside in our lives. Now, Daniel was set apart because of what was in Daniel. And what was in Daniel? The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God in Daniel was linked to what the Bible calls an excellent spirit. So it wasn't just Daniel's ability, his skillfulness, and the gifts that he had, and his good looks, and all that the Bible talks about. And many of us get stuck there. We get stuck with our good looks. We get stuck with our skills. We get stuck with our abilities. And we try to build and make our life based on those carnal and earthly things. Those things are not going to take you far, further because let me say this. I know many people who think they are good looking that do not have promotion in life because they are doing it the wrong way. And people, that, I'm just saying it as it is. Some of you think that you are you have so much of airs and graces about you that you make yourself higher than anybody else. And excellence as a Christian does not want us to go along that line. God does not want us as children of God to take excellence as something we want to focus on the way the world looks, like, looks at it. It is not the same as what the world calls performance-based. You know, in the world... When you're working for a company, you have this mindset on perfectionism and the company wants everything to be done right that on time, every time. And it's almost like, and someone used the term, a hamster wheel. You go to work and you're running on this hamster wheel and you're getting this wheel turning at all costs. And what's happening? Eventually, you become tired. You're working so hard, but you are getting nowhere. Because God does not get glorified in that type of work. 
You have to have fulfillment in what you do. And in what you do, you have to know that in everything you do, you have to glorify God. Now, we also mentioned this a while ago, working smart and working hard. The issue with working smart and working hard is, there is a, a generation that is after working smart and having to try and bypass working hard. You were, Daniel boasted in God alone. And if you want to guard yourself, if you are growing in the company, if you are growing in life and you are heading in the direction where you are seeing the favor of God upon your life, always know before you tell people, you must know that everything you are and wherever you are in life is because of God and God alone. And in having an excellent spirit comes from the following convictions. Firstly, the first conviction is that God is great. And so you want whatever you do to be great because you are a reflection of Him. The character of God is grounds for all our human excellence. God fills all definitions of excellence. In other words, His perfection, His flawless holiness, justice, loving, and the list goes on and on and on. Because remember, we were created in the image of God. You want to give your best to God while always improving on that. It's doing so while in and out of your house, when you're all alone, when you're in public, and no matter who is looking or who isn't. And God is the one who gives favor and giftings. And we have a responsibility to steward those giftings well. So when we do and when we function in accordance with pleasing God, things around us will fall in place because our priorities are now in place. And those in authority over us must be honored. And unless they demand of you to sin against God, but whoever is an authority over you, you must honor them because that is part of what God wants in an excellent spirit. Now why ex excellence, you may ask? Mediocracy is a word that is used in most organizations. People have used that in family discussions, in social circles. Now when you are mediocre, you do not reach the levels that God wants you to be. Mediocrity will pull you back and will rob you of where God wants to take you. Without God as a starting point and a continual frame of reference or discussion of excellence, our discussion of excellence would not make sense and it would be inadequate. We have to have God as our starting point. The excellence to which God calls us as believers requires the development of Christian virtues in our lives. You have to have the Christian virtues in our lives so that we can develop all that God wants us to become excellent. A virtue then is what? It's a skill, it's a habit, and it's an ingrained disposition to act, to think, and to feel in certain ways. And virtues are those good parts of one's character that makes a person excellent in life in general. A virtue becomes ingrained in our personality and thus becomes our very nature through repetition, practice, and also training. Now these words, you may, it may come up now, but these words are words that you'll find that people may have used in your circle. You may have used it on staff or teams that you work with. And let's see if these words ring a bell. Sloppy, half-hearted attempt, mediocre, rushed work, no thought given, excuses all the time, don't keep to your word, you run away when work is being distributed, and you always take the easy way out. Now, if those words rang a bell, then my dear friend, you and I need to understand those words so that we can run far away from people who are like that. Or if we are like that, we need to make sure we change those ways if we want to excel in what God wants us to do. Now, perfection is not attainable. Let me say this. Many people are aiming for perfection. Many people want to be perfect. But if we chase 
perfection, let me say this. You'll never catch perfection, but what you can catch is something that we are talking about today uh, is excellence. You'll never get perfection, but you will definitely get excellent. Matthew 5, 48, you therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now God's perfection is the standard for our lives. And don't think that we are God or don't think that, you see when we think that we are many gods, and there's a teaching that goes accordingly, and some people have just gone astray with all of that. Let me tell you this. Then the word excellent, because people who God puts above you, if your focus is pleasing God, if your focus is honoring God, then you will never be under pressure by what is happening around you. Because you know that you want to please God, and God is the one that's going to bring advancement into your life. So... As I bring this to a conclusion and I attempt to land this plane, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Let's aim high and not low. In other words, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right and whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. What does it do for me? What does excellence do for me? It fulfills me. It separates me from the average and the mediocre. It sets me up for an upgrade or for an advancement in life. Uh, purpose will find you when you have an excellent spirit. It protects you also from jealousy and it sets you up for what you know and I know as a word called promotion. Why does it protect you from jealousy? It's because your focus is on pleasing God and not man. And therefore you know in your pursuit of pleasing God, the things of this world will not affect you. Excellence must overcome what average people grumble about. Makes me pursue solutions instead of complaining. Makes me make improvements and not excuses. Now there's a word that also goes in line with excellence and that is diligence. The maximum payoff for the smallest amount of labor. Now, as we bring this to a conclusion today, there are principles of excellence that you can write down. These are the following principles that I feel will help you as an individual to grow in your personal capacity. Make the original work copy. What do I mean when I say that? You are an original. You are not a copy. You are not a uh, duplication of anybody else. You are uniquely and wonderfully made. And God has made you such that His Spirit is in you. And because God is a perfect God, and the very nature of God is perfection and excellence, we mirror what God wants in our lives. And when we do it right, we do it right the first time. And many times the difference between failure and success is doing something nearly right, or as some people say, doing something exactly right. Then invest in quality. Excellence always endures. It remains long after the cost is forgotten. Do everything you do for Jesus. <coughs> Colossians 3.23 And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Release your faith through confession, and you possess what you confess. Now, how many of you that are online today would want to see advancement in your personal life? I want to see that. I can see that we've dropped now considerably. I'm not too sure why. But those of you that are online, how many of you would want to see advancement in your personal life? <coughs> Let me see. Anesh Chetty, you saying amen? Good. 
How many of you, Trevor Maestri, you're saying amen, that's good. How many of you would want to see advancement in your life? Carl Sigamani, amen, well done. Tanya Anamali, well done, good. Marina Alexander, that's it, keep coming, keep it going. If you want to see advancement of excellence in your personal life, number one, prioritize God in your life. Don't make excellence so big and so important that God takes second best. Don't make excellence so focal that you forget who is the giver of the excellent spirit. Daniel did not have an excellent spirit because he was any better than other people. Daniel had an excellent spirit is because he prioritized God. In everything he did, he had the fear of God. These are the characteristics as I conclude today. Quickly, you can write these down. You have to have humility. If you don't have humility and you're striving for excellence, you're going to find yourself butting heads. Excellence is developed over time. It's not an overnight journey. It takes time to get to a place of excellence. You must be skeptical in all you do and think. When people are doing things and saying things, inquire, question it. The reason why I say that is because God gives you an inquiring mind. Don't just believe everything people say. Go and check it for yourself so that you don't waste time making mistakes. Complete whatever task has been given to you and benchmark against yourself and not others because God in you will be your biggest, biggest benchmark. Dear friends, I, I know that this morning we've been up and down and I'm not understand and maybe we think we understand it and we go about it the wrong way. We do it the way the world wants us to do it and we find ourselves falling short time and time again. we not getting the promotion we want. we not getting to the heights and the levels that we desire. Why is it happening to us, O oh Lord? And I pray today, Holy Spirit, that you, by the power of your word, will bring the revelation into the lives of all those that are watching today. To realize that unless our focus is on God, unless we benchmark against the perfect and the only excellent God we know, and that is Jesus Christ, this pursuit of excellence will mean nothing. And so I pray, Holy Spirit, start something today. Ignite in the lives of all those that are watching today that excellent spirit. The same spirit that Daniel possessed. The same spirit that we learn about in the book of 1 Peter. And let that spirit be born out of a relationship with God knowing who you are having a fear and reverence for you in the nature of a living God in Jesus mighty name Amen dear friends thank you for being online today we do apologize for the uh, break in transmission we'll try and work at that but for those of you that are online thank you we will see you on Tuesday if you, you want to be with us here in the building register today so that you can be with us in person here in the building for I'll be ministering to you on Tuesday night we will be online as well for those that cannot make it but I would like as many as possible we are only taking certain numbers to be here now while you remain online as the group will just worship and then uh, one of the young men, Shay, will come and close in prayer. Stay online and then they will close in a few moments from now.
Thank you, God, that we could be found in your presence. Dear friends, we thank you for joining us once again. We thank you that you could be blessed by the message. If you need this prayer today, I want you to repeat after me. Believe that you have received the answer to your prayer. Let us pray. Dear Father, we know sometimes, God, we've worked so hard. We've put so much effort, God, and we just don't see the fruit. Some of us, God, are frustrated, angry. But I pray today, God, that you see our hearts. You know, God, that we've done all. Some of us have lost so much, God. And we're trying to figure out, God, have you left us? Have you forsaken us? Where are you in our time of need? We want to excel. We want to grow. We want to move forward. But as we have learned today, God, as you have shown us in your word through, da to, through Daniel, that he had the heart and the spirit of excellence. Today, for our dear friends, our family, those that have just watched us, those that have just viewed us today, they need, God, your spirit of excellence. That in whatever you said, God, that we put our hands to, we will be prosperous. But today, God, we have realized that we cannot do it on our own strength. We cannot do it in our own ability. We cannot do it on our own hard work. But our only way to achieve our goal, to succeed in what we do, is through you. Help us, God, to keep our eyes focused on you. Humble us, God, to take every pride every discouragement away from us and help us to do everything that we do with a heart and a spirit of excellence that we will be victorious we will be prosperous and we will succeed because of you may we do it unto the glory of Jesus Christ bless us now God as we continue this week, let us see the fruit of the spirit of excellence. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.